What's up guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja here. In today's video, we're diving into the OnePlus Nord N10 5G. This is a $300 phone from one of my personal favorite phone makers. What could possibly go wrong? A lot. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Before I dig into this, I do have a little bit of OnePlus bias that I want to share. I love OnePlus phones and they sent this phone to me for review, but I made it a point to leave my phone bias out of this phone review. Launching January 15th on paper, the Nord NT 5G seems to be a decent contender for 300 bucks. $300 phones over the past few years have gotten so much better that the expectations of phones of that price have changed a lot thanks to the Pixel and also OnePlus. I mean, OnePlus has done it with their Nord phone last summer, which competes directly to $500 phones. And last year's Nord was a solid phone that would have suited most people's needs. When you compare these phones side by side, there is a huge drop off with the Nord NT, like the plastics being used. Nord from last year and the Nord NT, both of the phones are plastic, but the Nord NT gets fingerprints and dust all over the phone, where on the Nord, it remains clean and relatively fingerprint free. Now, speaking of fingerprints, the NT has a fingerprint sensor on the back and the Nord has one in the screen. And believe it or not, the on-screen fingerprint sensor actually works a whole lot better than the fingerprint sensor we see on this Nord NT. It goes a bit deeper than just the plastics. The Nord NT feels chunkier, it's thicker, and the buttons have a creak and squeak when you press them. None of that is found on the original Nord. And I'm sorry to bring up so many comparisons, but honestly, I'm so harsh because I know OnePlus can do better since they did around six months ago. But moving along from comparisons, let's discuss the screen. The display is 6.49 inches, it's Full HD+, and it's 90 hertz LCD, which in 2020 isn't something you should see even at this price point. The drop off for colors are intense, it's so bad that I actually thought I had a screen protector that was causing this color drop off. But no, it's just that bad. The brightness is only 400 nits max compared to 1000 from the previous phone. Okay, okay, I did a comparison. I'm sorry. The bezels are also really thick too. The screen is just bad and 90 hertz and a flat display can't even save it. Now rounding off the body of the phone, you have a headphone jack and a single speaker, which is mm, okay. Going around the side of the phone, you have the volume rocker and power button. The thing that is missing is the alert slider, which is typically a fixture for OnePlus phones, but it's gone. And honestly, it feels like OnePlus didn't even make this phone. The craftsmanship, the, the quality of build, it just isn't there. Things that you'd expect from OnePlus. One of the main reasons so many people love OnePlus phones is that it has great performance and the software is streamlined. It's using its own skin called Oxygen OS. OnePlus didn't give the N10 a chance, only giving it a Snapdragon 690 processor. It's just a slow chip. Currently, the well-performing mid-range phones are using Snapdragon 730G, which runs circles around the 690. Sure, this phone does have six gigabytes of RAM, but that can only do so much when the phone's processor is just as slow as this one. Playing any modern game, switching between apps, you'll quickly see what I mean, and you'll be reminded that this is a cheaper phone. It feels like OnePlus wanted to check some boxes on the spec category by giving this phone some unique specs, like an SD card slot, and also battery life is really good. I mean, I've gotten over a day and a half with normal usage, and a 64 megapixel camera. But sadly, everything, even the camera falls flat in execution. I did find with the camera, the Nord NT has a super dynamic range and images can get muddy pretty quickly. However, I will say the NT camera is pretty sharp for a selfie camera. Once again, same things we're seeing here, not a lot of dynamic range, colors, and vibrancy is pretty poor too. Yeah, you have different lens options, but when all of them fail in comparison to last year's phone or even the Pixel 4a by a long shot, it's really hard to get excited about this phone or even the camera. Look, I pick and choose videos to make reviews on, right? I only make a couple videos a week, if that. 
And this was a phone that I expected to get a lot out of because I love the original Nord so much. This phone feels like a cheap run of the mill phone you can find from a Chinese wholesaler. The bar is set pretty high for mid-level phones since OnePlus set it themselves. However, this phone is nowhere near that bar. Many people concluded that this is a bigger problem with OnePlus due to structural changes and I'm not going there in this video. But this is just a rare miss from OnePlus and hopefully their next Nord will be closer to the first one than this one. Anyways guys, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja. If you like a guy who gives honest reviews, no matter how bad it unfortunately sounds, please leave a like down below and also hit subscribe while you're down there if you'd love to see this type of content. Kevin the Tech Ninja, have a great day. Talk to you guys later.